Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have the same set of three charges put in the same position with the same distance between them, except now we're going to try to find the force on the middle charge due to the presence of the other two charges. So how does that change things? Well, let's do this first graphically. Let's indicate the force between charge 1 and charge 2 on charge 2. So the effect of the two charges right here. How does this charge affect this charge? What will be the force on the second charge due to the presence of the first charge? That's probably the best way to verbalize that. And so you can see there's a force repulsion, so this force will push against this force, and there'll be a force in this direction. So this would be the force F between 1 and 2, and of course it's a vector quantity. Now, what about the force between these two charges? What is the force on the second charge due to the presence of the third charge? Well, this charge will push against this charge and push it in the opposite direction. They're the same distance apart, these two, as these two, but this is a much bigger charge, so the force in this direction will be much greater. So this here will be the force between 2 and 3, and again, it's a vector quantity. So those are the two forces acting on the middle, ch middle charge due to the presence of the two outside charges. Now when we're going to add those vectorially, you can see that this is going to be bigger than this force, so when you sum them together, the sum of the two forces, F total, is going to be in this direction, and what we're trying to do here is find out what that force is. So again, using Coulomb's law, we're going to find the magnitude of those two forces, starting with the force between, in this case, let's start with between 1 and 2. Oh, and I don't need my red pen. Let me use my black pen here. It's easier to see. So 2. So that becomes F between 1 and 2. It's going to be equal to K times Q1, which is Q, times Q2, which is 2Q, all divided by the distance between them squared, which is d squared. So that gives us, uh, let's see here, that's 2kq squared divided by distance squared. And that's f between 1 and 2, and it'll be pointing to the right. Now we're going to find the force between the other two charges, between 2 and 3. So the force between 2 and 3 is equal to k times q2 Q3 divided by the distance between them squared. In this case, that's going to be K times Q2 is 2Q. Q3 is 3Q, and the distance would be D, and we square that. So this becomes equal to 6KQ squared divided by D squared. So now we can go ahead and find the total force. We know that the total force, F total, is equal to, in this case, it's going to be the sum of the two forces, F12 plus F23. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, isn't F23 pointing to the left? Yes, it is. But in general, when you write the force, you write it like this, and then when we plug in what that is equal to with the direction, we'll end up with a negative there. So don't worry about that. Next, we're going to write F total is equal to the magnitude between 1 and 2, which is right here, which is 2kq squared divided by distance squared in the x direction, and it's positive because it is pointing in the positive x direction. Now, here comes the negative, because when we add this, we know that it's going to be pointing in negative direction, so it's minus the magnitude, which is 6kq squared divided by d squared, like that, and of course in the x direction. Now when we add the two together, we have the total is going to be equal to minus 4kq squared over d squared in the x direction. And that's then the final force, the total force I should say, on the middle charge due to the presence of the other two chargers. And that's how it's done.